So uh, I wanted to update you on um, the um, uh, what's been going on with the Genomics and Society Working Group. Um, if um, people recall, we um, started this uh, working group because there was a change in the organization of NHGRI, which um, led to uh, moving around where the LC research program was. So the LC research program initially was in the Division of Extramural Research, and when the reorganization was undertaken, uh, it, there was a new division created, and the LC research program is now in the Division of Genomics and Society. So the changes that have gone on are um, sort of around the LC program. The LC program as a research program remains um, intact as an independent research program. And uh, the uh, challenge was more um, how to uh, change the way the institute was dealing more broadly with um, gen uh, issues associated with genomics and society. So um, just to show you the, the differences between the two uh, 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 organizations, LC is, as, as, it, uh, as you can see here, uh, still primarily um, it is a research program that uh, focuses on the ethical, legal, and social implications of genetic and genomic research, and in so doing, they uh, fund and uh, encourage, manage uh, research uh, grants and also uh, hold conferences about these issues and um, create research consortia and policy conferences to deal with them, uh, and the budget is a set aside from the, the uh, NHGRI budget. The Genomics and Society Group has LC in it, um, but then adds uh, or, or say, uh, emphasizes um, more clearly uh, certain elements. And one would be, uh, importantly, uh, to bring these issues uh, and integrate them broadly across NHGRI, so stimulate and enhance genomics. And another is to deal with um, collaborations with the Division of uh, Communication Policy and Education to make sure or to facilitate better the link between uh, LC research and possible policy uh, applications and also the need for certain policy and, and perhaps uh, getting a response uh, from the LC research community to help to help uh, inform that policy. The budget um, remains the same, however. So um, uh, let's see here. Uh, partly, part part of what's going on here, of course, is there's a uh, there was a bureaucratic motivation to do this in the sense of as part of the restructuring of the the management and the organization internally to NHGRI. But also, importantly, it, it also uh, is a recognition of how many uh, new problems and new events, things that have happened, that red arrow uh, refers to the point at which the genome is mapped. And so if you look to the, to the left side, yes, there were issues that ELSI was dealing with primarily uh, in the beginning, uh, very much focused on issues that came out of research. Um, and as we move uh, over to the right, there's much more going on. It's genomics. The genome's been mapped. We have many more issues going on. And um, a lot of these things are um, uh, dealt, need to be dealt with in terms of uh, broader patient population uh, as things move into clinics uh, and other popu new populations like the um, newborn um, or the non-invasive prenatal uh, diagnosis, things like that. So there's new populations that are um, beginning to be uh, uh, affected. So as, as genomics is starting to really percolate through the um, uh, healthcare system, the issues are growing and um, uh, are slightly are changing in, in nature, and that's part of the reason to have this new uh, division. Uh, this is just something that's a, out of a draft paper that I, I have that's not out yet, but I just thought it would be interesting here to look at. Um, so uh, this is uh, based on an analysis through Medline of using the MeSH terms related to LC, not LC itself as a MeSH term. Um, and if you go back to uh, 1986 to 1990, um, so before the genome, there were about 1,600 articles that might have fallen into those categories. Uh, and uh, in the most recent set, uh, 2006 to 2010, 
uh, there's over 10,000. So that's just it's just a, it's just a way to express. It's a way to represent what we all know is happening anyway. I think that that is just interesting, and it's about a sevenfold increase, and um, uh, more or less the same with uh, if you if you run the line of genetic research, it, it parallels it very clearly. So. I, but that was just an interesting uh, way to see what's been happening. So the idea then of having the, um, of creating the division and putting ELSI inside the division was to address this issue of, of being able to broaden and uh, expand the way that uh, NHGRI is dealing with these issues. And the idea is that um, these genome, the division uh, of genomics and society addresses problems that exist across the whole range of, um, of uh, kinds of research and moving into clinics and kinds of uh, projects that NHR, NHGRI takes on. And this is from the uh, strategic plan, the bench to bedside uh, um, uh, graphic that we have. This, um, this is a slide that uh, I, I was debating about putting it in or not. It was the first draft of a slide. I didn't do the second draft, and I actually kind of liked it at, at, at right here. It's very static, um, and, and what I was going to try to do was um, like move on and sort of show how these uh, changes would actually be made, make it more uh, dynamic, more um, uh, synthetic, more holistic, but I actually th sort of thought this might be a better way to stop, be, or to, to just have it only only go this far uh, at this point, because this is where we are. These are the connections that have to be made. This is a challenge. This is static at this point. I mean, yes, there are already existing an enormous amount of work that goes on. LC research program staff do not just work only on research. They do a lot of uh, work. They have a lot of alliances already with uh, these groups. But uh, I thought that this would be sort of just a, a, a historical point to come back to in a year and see if, see if the, the, the next diagram has a more uh, synergistic or holistic uh, appearance to it. So the, the question is, how do we get from what this looks like to, to uh, an ideal of something more um, integrated? And uh, so that was part of the reason that the um, Genetics and Society Working Group was established. And uh, so the idea was that it would provide input about the LC research program and uh, also talk very specifically, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, um, about how to think about the balance of LC uh, research initiatives, how they should be put together, um, investigator initiated versus program initiated. Uh, and the best use of limited budgetary and staff resources. I mean, that's an important theme that runs across this, and that is that all of these changes at this point are taking place uh, absent. Uh, 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 um, we have an acting director uh, in Mark Geyer uh, for the uh, Genomics and Society Division, um, but we don't have a, a, a permanent director. And um, the idea is that these changes are at this point taking place without um, budgetary changes. So there's a lot of sort of conceptual work that needs to be made in terms of thinking about priorities. Um, so also to that the uh, working group should be able to um, help advise about things coming down, uh, coming down the pike, what might be going on, uh, policy landscape, genomic medicine, um, and then this was this is one of the important things to identify ways that um, the new division can work uh, more effectively across NHGRI with the other the research and policy components, and then also uh, to think about synergy or collaboration between NHGRI and other institutes, and also going out to national and international. So this is um, um, oh one more sorry it identifies. Uh, issues that are more appropriately, this is an important one, more appropriately addressed by other NIH institutes or other agencies and organizations. And this has been one of the problems because as um, genetic and genomic research um, has expanded and as more and more institutes and more and more people are interested in taking this on and using it as a way to understand their particular um, field. Uh, they also encounter more um, of the LC-related issues, but they have not, the, ins the, the other institutes have not themselves established um, an office to deal with, uh, with LC issues, so that while it's welcome and, and um, um, very encouraging that all of the other institutes have, have um, embraced uh, this sort of research, um, it is a burden on the LC 
uh, research staff to uh, to be the the primary, if not sole, um, repository of um, expertise on these issues vis-a-vis -vis all of all of NIH. So we put together a working group and got some um, excellent people to serve. Um, this is a working group of council, and so there needs to be at least one member of council on it, and there are three right now, uh, including myself and Amy and David Williams. David and I are rotating off fairly soon, so uh, Amy will be the representative. <laughs> um, and um, this has been a, a, a great group to work with so far. We've had some phone calls and we've had some meetings. Um, the first meeting was uh, in April, and um, what we did more than one might expect for a, a group was really try to concentrate on explaining to them um, very basic facts about the organization um, of NHGRI and the relationship between ELSI and NHGRI and what the um, reorganization did. So because part of what they will need to do initially has to do with sorting out how to move the division forward, and that requires understanding the division, the place of the division within the institute. So we had talks by Mark Iron, Eric Green, and Jean McEwen and Joy Boyer um, about NHGRI reorganization, the goals and mandates of the division, um, and the history and organization of challenges of the ELSI program and of um, ELSI budget and finance. So we spent the first day going over a lot of very basic things, and um, I don't think that anybody in the group, other than those of us who are now on council, I don't think there's anybody in the group who had been on council ever. I mean, some people have been on study section, some people still are, but there was, um, there was a need to, to have a lot of these conversations. People were um, not really aware of a lot of the details. Um, so on the second day, we had two discussions uh, to move this along, and the first one was about um, talking about program priorities, research program priorities. And um, this is important for several reasons, but, but partially because um, the way that priorities have been set in the past has been um, primarily through the uh, strategic planning process, and there's a sense that it doesn't um, necessarily address the details of, um, of the LC mandate as, as closely as it should. And so there was a lot of talk about how to, um, uh, how to figure out a better, more effective means for um, creating LC research program priorities. Um, and uh, then we also talked about um, how to talk about the evolving field of LC, um, how to improve the program balance between research-related and service-oriented activities. This is at the crux of a lot of the challenge of moving from just the LC program to officially putting it inside of a division where the division officially has the responsibilities for um, uh, working with uh, people who are working on policy and things like that that are really not research activities. And so how do we, uh, how do we handle that challenge in a way that's appropriate and that maintains the excellence of the research program? Uh, and so one idea is that the working group was proposing was to uh, figure out how some of the duties that have been taken on by the LC staff can be transferred out um, and whether or not there's a way to grow those skills um, more broadly, for instance, within NHGRI, some of the skills that they bring to the, to the conversation. Um, on the second day, we talked about um, how to integrate LC research into genomic research and policy. And this is a part of the whole story because um, again, as there is more and more research um, being done on genomics, uh, the question is what's the best way for ELSI to, to uh, track that, to parallel that, so you can have an embedded program where there are members of the research team who are ELSI identified. You can have a parallel program where they are funded through parallel RFAs. Uh, you can leave it to the R01 mechanism. Um, so there are a lot of different ways. and so. Um, whether there should be embedded, independent, service-oriented, scholarly, different, um, different uh, modes of integrating uh, LC research into genomics. Um, and then what we next started to talk about was how to assess the value of an embedded LC component, because there's been some uh, 
success with this recently, and so is this a good, a good, uh, a good mechanism to use? And so we started to talk about, well, how would you know? How would you know uh, whether it's a good thing? And so we started to try to talk about, should, there, should we try to create um, a list of standardized questions that could be applied for all new programs that would help the ELSI group assess what would be the best way for ELSI to, um, to become integrated into various research programs? So um, we haven't actually come up with a list yet, but the proposal is that, that we can. I mean, it will be based. It would be based on those the middle section. I think maybe Karen is Karen here, Rothenberg. <laughs> yes. Okay. So maybe Karen can speak to this a little bit more. Um, this was the session that she chaired, um, but these were some of the ideas that we came up with about how to um, how you could go about trying to ask those questions and make those decisions. So that was uh, the second day, and um, we will move forward. We're having phone calls in between, but the next time we can figure out a time to meet is in November. And in November, uh, the working group members themselves will start to do presentations. So the first time around, we really had um, the staff of ELSI and the staff of NHGRI in, a, in the role of educating the members of the working group. And now the working group people themselves are going to pair up and um, come up with their different assignments of um, the issues that we talked about uh, in those two discussions. Uh, and we're going to uh, focus in on um, at least two areas and start to decide how the working group can best address them, whether it will be through a set of recommendations, through a report. We haven't exactly decided the mechanism. But this is all, so what we're focusing on now is the um, relationship between ELSI and the division and on ELSI and how to, how to um, improve or how to have the priority setting process be as effective as possible within ELSI. And then the goal eventually is to move on and to have a much more broad, uh, a broader sort of take on initiatives about how LC should be addressed. Uh, but this is where we're starting. And then the other uh, things that we'll do at that meeting is that we'll get um, a report on the LC training efforts, which is important because the SEER program is um, the first groups, first people who got their SEER, first institutions to get their SEERs will be. Um, moving out of that, it's just five years and five years and out, and so they've been very effective as training mechanisms. So what, I mean, yes, there are other ones being funded, but what to do with those universities that have created some really excellent training programs. Uh, update on the division director search, and um, we'll also have presentations from the intramural program, uh, from the communications and education and policy, and from the bioethics core intramural program. Ooh, that's a typo. So the issue being, um, uh, again, more of an educational piece so that the working group members can um, have a sense of, of what the infrastructure is and what these other offices are. So uh, I think this has gone very well so far, and I want to thank the uh, LC and NHGRI leadership and staff who have helped us out and been very, very uh, generous with their time and their resources. Uh, and any questions? Okay. Thank you, Pamela. Mm -hmm. Questions? Comments? Discussion? Amy, do you want to, as a member of the working group, do you want to add anything or? No, I think that was, um, I think that was very helpful. Um, it's a great group of people. I think the, my understanding is that the goal is for this to be kind of a long-standing group that, mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't always get into the weeds of the LC program in this uh, council meeting because the it's such a small portion of the portfolio so the idea is to kind of serve as a advisory council to um, the staff for that program so I think it's so far the first meeting Pamela did a great job and um, it was very um, it was very helpful I think for all the members just a quick question um, by matter of interest you, you noted on one of the days you there was a discussion of what are the evolving interest points of LC, and I just wondered, did, are there hot buttons that uh, that you came up with that you'd like to share? Uh, you know, what the conversation was about more was how to standardize or how to make the process of doing that and, and how to integrate that so that that's an ongoing um, capacity. But maybe Amy or Karen or anybody else has, no, <laughs> okay. 
I would just also say that I think um, the group very much was in agreement that um, we would welcome sort of questions or direction from this group in terms of, of our activities because um, I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of issues that come up in terms of sort of there's this 5% set aside and it's kind of its own autonomous independent thing, but we're starting to see LC get integrated more into some of these other programs outside of that set aside budget and thinking about how much to do that and where to do that and when it's appropriate. And um, so I think, I think uh, as, we, as we get ready to meet in November, if past this meeting people have suggestions of things that they would like for us to tackle, I think. I don't mean to speak for you, Pam. No, no, no. I think that's, the group is very, <laughs> very open to, um, to mm -hmm. getting feedback. I mean, I should also add uh, maybe a few things. I mean, keep in mind, I've been very open about uh, this, creating this new division from the very beginning, in that this is sort of, you know, wet clay. Uh, even some of the things that you see from Pamela's presentation or hearing me talk about it before, there are um, some ideas about how this, this new division can be something even beyond just the LC research program classically defined. And, and clearly, I, I'm trying to set up an opportunity so that when the uh, first permanent director is identified, part of the attraction, I would think, of being that individual would be to be able to create something and take this division in a direction beyond what it has done traditionally in the LC research program. Um, um, either, either within the LC research or, or things around it or as other things that would fall under the general umbrella of, of genomics and society. So I, part of my reason for wanting to get this working group up and going and functional interactive and thinking about stuff is so that when a new director is there, the first director is identified, that individual now has a, a good group to immediately interact with and to bring, I, so I, I'm fully convinced that once the director's in place, there will be things this working group will be doing that we can't anticipate right now. 